Undead Season is a mysterious podcast for D&D nerds, hosted by Knocked Brawn. Find more ways to support our show in the episode description. So we are going to join you guys. You have come into this familiar campsite of Zell and his family, but much has changed since the last time you were in this memory. And Zell, you would actually remember as you're looking around, things are different, but the same about this campsite. It has been about three years since the Sparkhopper incident with your son, Delry, that we last saw you when you were training your family. To set the scene a little bit, the campsite lay in ruin. The aftermath of a brutal raid by the Pinkerton family. Tents were torn and shredded. Once vibrant colors are now muted and stained with dirt and blood. The fire pit smoldered with the remnants of a once lively blaze has now been reduced to feeble embers amidst ash and charred debris. The only thing that seems right side up about this campsite is a pristine ransom note stabbed into the side of Delry's cloth tent. Zell, you remember the brutalistically penned note that is seemingly... Actually, make me a a nature check. (laughs) Twelve. A twelve. All right. (laughs) With a 12, you can tell that this was penned in not human blood, but rather pig's blood. And you would remember with a 12 history check, the Pinkerton family owns a pig farm. So it kind of makes sense that Mm -hmm. they were trying to, to make it appear more threatening than it would seem. But the note, still threatening nonetheless, says, Turn yourselves in. We know where you and your family sleep. Regards. The Pinkertons. So as, as I'm walking over there, are are any of the memory versions of me and yeah. my family there? Yeah. You see Zelbarath and Alaria that are standing amidst the ruins of this camp. The tension between you and your wife hangs thick in the air. And Alaria's gaze is bearing deep into the back of Zelbarath's head as he's reading this note over and over again. Zel, we can't keep ignoring this. Her voice now trembling with this emotion of fear. The Pinkertons won't just go away. If we refuse to pay them, they'll come after us. They'll come after Delry. And I can't bear the thought of losing you or of losing our son. The memory of Zelbarath's jaw tightens as he hears Alaria's words ping off the back of his head. Your own frustration you remember bubbling over to the surface. Don't let them intimidate you. Your voice now reverberating with this false vibrato. They can't touch us out here. We're more trouble than we're worth, and they know it. This is a hollow threat at most, and you run your fingers along the paper. This is surely pig's blood. Watching the scene. Can I look to the others? Ah. Yes, one of the first major blows that the Pinkertons had done to us. You see, they had been... They'd been demanding we pay for tags hunting the Sparkhoppers, despite the fact that they're an invasive species destroying the entire area. We were literally saving it from ecological collapse. (laughs) But they wanted us to pay now. (laughs) I don't know what corrupt deal they got for such rights and ownership, but apparently it was all legal that they could charge, but I refused to pay. For if I was not out here hunting them, the entire area would fall into chaos. Ah. But the Pinkertons, they're a powerful group. Indeed. In my dealings with them, they are people who command a certain amount of respect, whether through fear or power, that's to be determined. But their presence is undeniable. I'm so sorry you had to to deal with this. They completely destroyed your place. This looks nothing like the camp we were in 
not even a day ago. Yeah, but in this case, they did it while we were gone. Cowards. They knew they could not deal with us head on. Tara, the man you were talking to was a Pinkerton, correct? The old you? I did not know that at the time, but yes, he was a Pinkerton. I do know the pain of the Pinkerton. Much pain. They have wider reach than I had thought. And not even to mention the fact that they seem to be under quite a bit of control in the astral plane itself. That was, I I, I will admit, probably the most shocked I've been since uh, all of this, other than, you know, when I first came to and saw you. Well, I, I find it interesting that we're in this memory now because we've learned there's got to be something of value here, something to learn. There's got to be a reason that we're in this memory. Oh, the monster. Oh. Musimus. D- oh, that's right. D- did you see? Did I, you see the trail, the path? I, I saw the, the trail. The prince. I'm. <sighs> the shock of the scene distracted I'm, me. I'm terribly concerned that Moosey Moose has not only been affected by the monster, but the monster may have been in him. We've been following these Acker foot tracks for s- foot tracks. <laughs> foot I, like it. I like foot tracks. I like yeah. foot tracks. As opposed to bear tracks, you know. We've been assuming that that's how we're going to track down this monster. So if we're still sticking with that, then that means that the monster was inside Moosey Moose and we just released him in my memory. Now, I'm not ready to rush to get there. I'm not even convinced that maybe we should be in the same portal as the monster. So I want to accomplish whatever we need to do here, but I'll just have you know that I think we're finally catching on to a pattern here. If we encounter something that has the little incisions on it and seem to be affected by that acker, we need to confront the possibility that that may be the monster that we're looking for. Also now, I'm... I've already been affected by it. Surely touching it makes it worse, but I think I uh, am well enough. I've experienced it enough now that I could test our theory by feeling for the Ica. It appears if you are able to overcome its initial uh, grip on you, it falls away. Unlike before, where it was so hard to remove from things. Potentially it is because it is left if it is in your memory and no longer here it may not be having as much of an impact good insight speaking of i did it for moosey moose and shrubbery shrubbery <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it me no it's, it's actually it's actually shrubby yeah, yeah. He, ju- he just corrected me on it i, I feel te- i've been calling him shrubbery for so long so i continue but if you would If we decide to confront this creature, or to at least track it down, I may be able to open another portal to your memory. But that is a very um, turbulent idea. I cannot guarantee that I can do it. All right, well, when the time comes, we can try it. Good try it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's a very good one. That's very good, Zell. <laughs> so witty. Wow, you're so funny. Okay, so we're just sitting by this campfire scene, right? Javi's gonna kinda like tuck away for a second, just almost like no goodbye, just laser focus all of a sudden. You're gonna see him sit up, turn, and start kinda walking his way over. He's gonna doff all of his suit but his gauntlet. Okay. And then he's going to grab Finn and send Finn into his bag of holding and, and uh, just kind of whisper something to him. And Finn's going to go and retrieve the, what I believe is Iker that Javi bagged back in like probably first session. Yeah. One second or two. session. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And see if Finn can grab it. Yes. For him. Does Elbrath feel like the return of it? Does it start affecting me? So as. Yes, as, uh, go ahead and make me a wisdom save as the Iker comes out of the bag. Interesting. With advantage. <laughs> <laughs> what'd you get? Uh, me? No, what'd you get the well, first I've time? Well, I've rolled three ones now, let's really? say, in two rolls, so do what? the math on the- that. 
No, that's sorry. Oh, I rolled one. one. <laughs> and two rolls. I rolled. I rolled a one <laughs> and an eleven. Why would you oh, say it like that? I, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> With an eleven, the voices are going to start to eke back into your mind. I'm going to say an eleven is right on the cusp of. Do I? Am I able to see? I think that something's. I happening. haven't even really been able to do anything. I initially just want to see as it comes out of the bag. What does it look like? What does it do? Does it move? Yes. Just be able to actually look at it for just a second. What is it? But we might be able to use it to track down the Iker. I'm it's trying, trying to, to see... reconnect with itself. I we f- might just be able to open a portal, I'm... put it on the <laughs> ground, and just. Just what does it do now that it's out of the bag and it's just in its form in front of us? Yes. So like Mason was saying, Finn pulls this clump of Iker out and it, like flubber, flattens on the ground around it. And then it starts to kind of like writhe and like bubbles up in little ways and starts to like make a little wave and starts moving in a direction. Okay, just slowly on its own. So slowly, like less than less than a foot a minute. Like it is okay. And very, Finn very still slow. has a hold of it. Finn still has a hold of it. So is keeping it in the same spot, but it is trying to slither like a snail out of Finn's grasp. I would like to do an experiment as I see Zell is uh, seems to be suffering some negative side effects from the goo. I am going to. Uh, reach out and try to cast protection from good and evil on him. Absolutely. And see if that has any effect. Till the spell ends, one willing creature you touch is protected against certain types of creatures. Aberrations, celestials, elementals, fey, fiends, or undead. So I would choose aberrations. The protection grants several benefits. Creatures of those types have disadvantage on attack rolls against the target. The target can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed by them. If the target is already charmed, frightened, or possessed... By such a creature, a target has advantage on any of the new saving throws against them. Awesome. Well, I love that because that plays so well into the mid-road where you were at. The voices creep into your mind for a moment, and you hear, Why are you here? As this familiar voice well, of the Iker you? slips into your brain. <laughs> and then Talroth walks over. I like yeah. to think that you hear me like, Why are you here? <laughs> Protection. <laughs> the power of Christ compels you. Uh, oh no! And so you, I've you, seen uh, this movie. <laughs> you perform a, a slight exorcism, and you will now have advantage on any wisdom saving throws going forward, as well as uh, you stave off the advances of nice. the Iker being around. Talroth has turned your iffy success into a full success. That. That did it. I, at least for the moment, I no longer am being affected. I can only keep it up for a temporary period, but if we are going to be investigating this Ico, then I think at best we have the proper precautions in place. You know what? Oh, yeah. I I meant to tell you guys. I was considering doing some experiments (laughs) on the Ico, and (laughs) it can be unstable sometimes. I mean, oddly enough, I'm I'm glad you have some. We really know nothing about this, but I'm not a huge fan that it's having such a big effect on you, Zell. Yes, that, that that could be problematic. However, this experiment has gone quite successfully now that we we know Talroth has a way of uh, subduing Momentarily. the effects. So that's that, true. That could be very useful in the future in case uh, Shrubby or or another akin soul is being affected. Is the monster inside Moosey Moose, or is the monster Moosey Moose? It was originally seen attacking Moosey Moose and teleported away with him, I believe, if my memory serves me. So since it attacked Moosey Moose, I would assume it is probably, I, I would characterize it as a possession, perhaps? I agree. It seems like the monster could possess, I guess that's a fair word, just about anybody. But that's just my prediction. I get so it's hard to say. <laughs> You're looking at yourself like <laughs> having a like, crisis for a moment. <laughs> perhaps too much contact would be a bad thing, actually. I would definitely agree with that. If if you start getting a bunch of little cuts all over your body, we're gonna 
we're gonna have to figure something out but we'll cross that bridge if and when we get there uh, but since we're all feeling okay right now and the icker is out as you guys are all having this discussion Javi's just staring staring <laughs> at the icker Vin, give it a little pinch <laughs> No, the the, the <laughs> no, just, I will let you roll again, like as with advantage, because Finn is not being affected by this Iker, so he has kind of a more in depth. You can add your Arcana check to this roll. Nineteen. Nineteen. All right. Describe to me how you're investigating this. What are you looking for? What are like? He's gonna have Finn just like poke and prod it and see. Does it react? Does it respond to pain? To does it seem to be have any form of like life force? Is it weakened when he's squeezing it or pulling it backwards? Just get a general feel of, is it living, non-living, sentient? Are we able to separate it or does it conglomerate? Like, so if we pull a piece of the goo off of it and put it down, that too. does it come back Ooh. together or yeah. does it Ooh. stay separate and do stuff? As we yes. get to that so point. So Talroth and Javi, you guys kind of collaborated on this as you are kind of looking over this Iker and Zell, you're understandably so keeping your distance a little bit from it f- through fear of not wanting the voices to come back. Finn uh, has surgical tools all out little. Dis- yeah, Finn pulls out his mini chainsaw <laughs> and cuts the uh, Iker in half. Um, and the Iker splits. Some of the Iker starts crawling away, but then it gets a, a, a little bit distance away from the main blob of Iker that Finn is holding. And then it slowly, as it as it reaches a certain point away from the main blob, comes back and reconglomerates into this puddle. It seems that it is trying to get to a bigger source. However, the other bigger source may not be close enough in radius for it to reach. During these experiments, um, we know that they are vulnerable to radiant damage i believe yes um do are we able to find out any other just while studying it any damage Stimuli. resistances seeing things that seem totally. to affect it more or less or stuff like that just so we can study yes. the creature so with a 19 on the arcana check and with with the things that you guys are studying you hold your lantern filled with will of wisps and though the will of wisps generally give off the lightning damage it, they have enough divine sense with your aura of the raven queen that the iker kind of skitters away from your lantern and you are able to determine that it has a vulnerability to radiant damage you would know as with a 19 like a caterpillar this seems to be the first stage. This Icarus substance seems to almost be like the fluid that forms around an insect that is getting ready to cocoon, to evolve into something new. As Finn is starting to surgically pick at this Iker, the Iker monster gets confused and this Iker puddle wraps itself around Finn, similarly to like Venom in uh, the Spider-Man franchise, or the Marvel franchise, should I say, and wraps itself around Finn, and you see the, the, the bubble things that were happening from those protrude small razor-like surgical almost mm-hmm. equipment that start p- 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 trying to get inside of Finn but as Finn is not made out, out of organic matter is unable to get inside of Finn to harvest any soul or anything that yes. it was trying to and Javi it seems that it has a liking for Finn for the sake that it is the shape of an animal. It is used to eating animals' souls for substance, and it seems to have a hunger that is increasing over time as it is growing bigger and bigger. It seems to be withering as it has not eaten its quota of souls for the day, being in your bag of holding. You are also going to find small forming body parts 
inside of this ichor. Seeming to be growing similarly to how plants bulb from a seed, these body parts look to be very newly formed. Like I said, similarly to how like a caterpillar is growing something into a butterfly. With a 19, that is the information that you get. Wow. That is a lot to process and go through. Essentially, every place that we have been that this monster has infected someone, they now have a child there that is growing inside that memory and is devouring that's, that's all what the I'm animals within it. So gathering. there's... Are you gathering that there's multiple then? That we have basically, in our We're attempts to chase it, it is, it is spreading across, and each memory that we have visited, it is tainting another animal, it is tainting something else, leaving part of itself behind, which, as we can see, it's able to grow, and then... Oh, if that's the case, we are in much trouble. Yes, that is a much... <laughs> that is a much oh, well, bigger... It sounds like oh. more like the astral plane is in trouble. We ourselves just need to get like, that's true. to just our afterlives. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, just, this is everybody else's problem. Yeah. yeah, we're all bailing for campaign four. Let's Listen, just I destroy, just had destroy this universe. <laughs> my, goal, my thing was 1,000 souls. Smoking gun